Welcome back. This is Completing the Square, 4.6B, continued. Here we go. From review, perfect trinomial squares that fit into a certain pattern. For instance, x squared plus 14x plus 49. You should see trinomial should break down into two factors. Okay, if you notice, x squared and 49 are perfect squares, so we think, okay, square root is x plus 7, x plus 7. Does that work? Yes. Well, technically, we can break this down into two x plus 7s. Okay, this is called completing the square. And this is just another method to solve quadratics, meaning we're finding the root or the x-intercepts of a quadratic equation. We can also use this to help us take us from polynomial form, which is what you're looking at, x squared plus 14x plus 49, into vertex form. Vertex form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So what we need to do is we're going to take half the coefficient of the x term, which is the middle term, and then we need to square it to get that, s that last part. So for instance, we have almost a trinomial. We have x squared minus 22x plus something. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take half of the b. We're going to get 11, or negative 11. You can look at it that way. And then we square negative 11, and you get 121. So what times what equals x squared? That's going to go here. That's x. Okay. Then we have to keep the sign that originally is on the middle term, or in other words, we're going to look at this term right here. This is going to come from here. What did we square? We squared negative 11. So this is minus 11. So our binomial x minus 11, or x minus 11 times x minus 11, should give us x squared minus 22x plus 121. So examples for completing a square. Notice we need the third factor, or the c term. So we're going to take half a negative 6, which is negative 3. Okay, if we square negative 3, we're going to get 9. 9 goes right there for c. What did we square to get 9? Negative 3, so this becomes x minus 3 squared. Okay, hit pause, do the second one, and then there's a tricky one, but you can do it on the third. Welcome back. A little tricky. Here we go. Half of the 15 gave us 7.5. Now, here's the problem. Stay away from decimals. Keep that fraction. Reduce it if you can. So we had 15 halves. That is what's going to go way over here. So we are squaring x plus 15 halves. Well, what's 15 halves squared? If we look at the bottom here, we're going to get 225 over 4. That's what goes in the C part. Okay, stay away from decimals. Leave them as the fractions or improper fractions. <coughs> So the last term, if we take half of b, we get b over 2. So that becomes the x plus b half squared. Okay, if we square b over 2, you get b squared over 4, which becomes that c term. How do we solve by completing the square? We're going to take the c term, and we're going to move it over here. So we're going to go x squared plus 6x. We're going to put a plus a blank. Then we're going to set equal to... And then when we move the 16 over, you get 16 plus 0, which is 16. And then we're going to put a plus and a little blank. So we have two blanks, blankety blank. Okay. Then we're going to drop this down. And we're going to put some square equals some number. In other words, we needed to make that a trinomial. And then what's the binomial that we squared to get the trinomial? So if you remember, half of the middle term, which is 6, half of 6 is 3. And we do already have the 1x square out here. So this is x plus 3 squared. What is 3 squared? That's 9. That's going to go right up here. So we get 9. Okay, whatever you add to the c, you need to add to the other side. So now we have 16 plus 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay, so our equation right now is... Our equation right now is x plus 3 squared equals 25. Now, this goes back to what we just did on the square root theorem. You have something squared equals 25. So how do we undo a square? 
you square root it, which gives us plus or minus the square root of the other side. Left side becomes just an x plus 3. We have plus or minus 5. If we move the 3 over, you get 3 plus 5 equals 8. Or you also have 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. So we just came up with two roots. They are x equals 8 and negative 2. Okay. Hit pause. Try the second one. Welcome back. Uh, if you notice, our answer should be 2 and negative 12. So real quick, move the 24 over, you get plus 24. Uh, we have some blank on the left-hand side, so we take half of that 10. Half of 10 is 5, so that's what we are taking as a binomial, x plus that 5. If you square the 5 with it, or that term right there in the binomial, we get 25, which fills out the c term on the quadratic. Okay, if you add it to the left side, 25, you must add it to the right side. So we get x plus 5 squared equals 49. Okay, how do we undo a square? Take the square root. By taking the square root, remember the right side, you do have a plus or minus. Plus or minus gives you the square root. X plus 5 equals plus or minus 7. So by subtracting the 5, you get the two equations. You end up getting answer 2 and negative 12. Just to double check, if you remember, these are our roots. So these are also points at 2, 0 and negative, two, zero, or negative 12, 0. So on a quick graph, we know that the graph's going to cross at 2. And we know over here, way at negative 12, it's going to cross. It does open up. So it's going to look something like this quick picture. Now, on the next one, you got to be careful. Because if we have an A term here that's bigger than 1, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So there's a couple steps here that we want to do. So let's move, since that's a positive, let's keep it a positive, we're going to move the 6x over, but keep the c term on the other side. So 2x squared plus 6x equals 7. Okay. Now we have to make that a 1x squared. By making that a 1x squared, we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2 to all three terms. Okay. By dividing by 2, you're going to get x squared plus 3x equals 7 halves. Okay? We are now where we want to be, just like the last two questions. Except we need a c term. Okay? So we're going to separate and write x squared plus 3x plus blank equals 7 halves plus blank. So we need to figure out what's going to go in the blanks. Okay? Well, if you remember the steps, we need to take half of the b term Half of the B term is going to give us that answer that's inside here. Half of that is 3 halves. So we'll keep that as 3 halves. Okay, we need to square 3 halves to get 9 fourths. So that's what goes in the C term. So we need to add it to both sides. 9 fourths. By adding, notice common denominator. So we're going to change the 7 halves basically to a 14 fourths. So we have 14 fourths plus 9 fourths, which is 20 three fourths. So now we have a binomial squared is equal to a constant or a number. Okay, now you are at that step which is just like again part A. We have square root theorem. Undo this by taking the square root and that is equal to the plus or minus the square root of the next side. By doing that we're gonna get x plus three halves equals plus or minus 23, we cannot take the square root of a 23, but we can take the square root of 4, which is 2. So right now you are at x plus 3 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 23 over 2. Okay. By moving the 3 halves over, we're going to get x equals negative 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 23 over 2 which cannot be simplified anymore. There's our answer. The only thing you could do, which we probably just leave it like that, is we can put it under a common denominator and say x, do not forget your x, equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 23 all over 2. So going back to what did we just do? Step 1, you need to move the constant to the other side if it's not there. 
Okay. Then we need to divide by the coefficient of x squared. If it's a 1 already, we, are already, we don't have to divide by 1. Okay. Step 3. What do we do? We complete the square and add to the other side. Okay. Step 4 says factor. So now we factor, and then we take the square to both sides. Do not forget the plus or minus. Okay. Connections. So if we need to graph y equals x minus 3 squared minus 5, and then state transformations from the parent graph, y equals x. Well, if you notice, if I take this x minus 3 times x minus 3, and I multiply that out, you get y equals x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 5 which is y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4. Okay, so I just put it into standard form. It originally started in vertex form. Okay, if you remember, okay, we want to figure out, well, how does it move from the y x squared? Okay, well, the form, vertex form, we already did. Okay, so the form y equals x minus 3 squared minus 5 is called the vertex form of the parabola because we can easily get the vertex. So, what is the vertex? Remember, what can you plug in there to make it 0? 3. If you plug in 3, this whole thing becomes 0. What's left? Negative 5. So the vertex is 3, negative 5. One other thing that we know, if you look at it, the A term is a positive, so we know it moves up. So it is going to cross the x-axis. Question. How do you get a quadratic function in vertex form? Complete the square. So if we have our equation up here, we can complete the square and get the same answer. Going back first to the graph and the translation, if I know the vertex is 3, I know it went right 3, and it went down 5. Okay, the A is 1, so it's not going to stretch or compress. Okay, the points, if you remember, are 5 points, hopefully, by graphene. Hopefully, you s put the vertex here in the middle okay, and graph the two points. 2x two is above 3, 2x two is below 3. By graphene, you should see the pretty graph. If you, one thing I did forget, usually, remember, we have our axis of symmetry. X is a symmetry is a line at X equals 3. If you remember, vertex form, quadratic function equals Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C with A equal to 0 can be written in, or not equal to 0, can be written in the vertex form by completing the square. So we need to put it in this form, A times X minus H squared plus K, where the vertex is HK. Okay, so the example we have. If you have y equals x squared minus 12x plus 4. On the previous examples, this y was pretty much a 0. When we just want to put it in vertex form, that 0 becomes a y. So we keep the y, so we sh shove it to the side a little bit. So if you remember, completing the squared, we need to move the c term. So if we subtract the 4 over, we're going to get y minus 4 on the left equal to x squared minus 12x. Hey, then the next thing is to say, okay, I need to get the c term. So if, remember, if you take half of 12, you're going to get negative 6. That becomes a binomial that's x minus 6 here, and then 6 times 6 is 36. Whatever you add to the c, you need to add to the other side. So normally we, we would just have negative 4 plus 36, but because we're keeping the equation, you're going to keep the y, so now we have y plus 32 equals x minus 6 squared. By moving the negative 32 over, we get y equals x minus 6 squared minus 32. The vertex, what goes in here to make the 0? 6. What is left? This negative 32, there is our vertex. 6, negative 32. So I need to write. The function in vertex form by completing the square, give the coordinates of the vertex. Hit pause. Do the first one on the left. We'll do number two on the right. Go. Welcome back. What makes inside the parentheses zero? Negative two. What's left on the outside? One. 
more complicated. What makes it more complicated is you have a 2 in the a squared part. So what we need to do, if you remember, there's a couple different ways, but we're going to just subtract 13 over. So we're going to get y minus 13 equals 2x squared plus 16x. Okay. Now to make the right side better, what we're going to do is we're going to have the y minus 13 on the left. We're going to factor out, because you can factor out a 2. We're going to factor out a 2 and have x squared plus 8x. Now we need to make that a trinomial, so I'm going to put a blank there. And then we also have a plus blank on the left-hand side. So we need to think, what, what's going to make that a perfect square? So half of the b inside is 4. So we're going to go x plus 4 squared. Now, what's 4 squared? 16. So this 16 goes here. Now, normally, in the steps before, we said, OK, whatever you add to the c on the right, you add to the left. But the problem is, is we didn't just add a 16. We had taken out a 2. So 16 times 2 is 32. That's what we need to add over here is a 32. So now you have y plus 32 minus 13, which is 19. So you have y plus 19 equals 2 times the quantity x plus 4 squared. Move the 19 over, and we have vertex form. Okay, what's the vertex? What makes inside the parentheses 0? Negative 4. If you plug in negative 4, your answer for y would be that what's left on the right-hand side, okay, which is negative 19. Put everything together. Take the given function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. See if you can answer a, b, c, d, e, f, and graph. Check back with me in a few minutes. Push pause. Welcome back. Taking you through this real quick. If you notice, because of the x squared minus 2x minus 3, you have something that opens up it will have a minimum. That minimum value is the y value on the vertex. So going through a quick couple steps, hopefully you found the y-intercept. Plug in 0 for x, you get negative 3. Then to find the zeros, which was section 4.5, set f of x or y equal to 0. And then we hopefully can factor. We factored to x minus 3, x plus 1. You end up getting 3 and negative 1. Now remember, those are actual roots. So at 3, comma 0 and negative 1, comma 0, we have points. So you can see them over here on the graph, at which I circled. Okay. Their axis symmetry is at the x coordinate or the x point. So x equals negative 1. And there were two methods to solve the vertex. First method we used in 4.2. Second method we used now, we're completing the square. Both of them give you 1, negative 4. What's the transformation from that x squared? Now remember, the x squared is this red one. So it starts at 0, 0, and it's the dotted. So what's happened to our vertex? It has gone right 1, down 4. There is no flip. There is no compression or stretch. Do your best, forget the rest. Bye for now. I think. Come on. Coke cool and that a bore. And I'm looking for some action. But like Mick Jagger said, I can't get no satisfaction.